minute. In the middle of your night, there's a Christian nightlight beaming the good news from 1,149 feet in the air, piercing the darkness with a bright ray of hope. From the tallest freestanding observation tower in the United States, breaking the bondage of temptation by booming down into Sin City's late night Las Vegas strip. Broadcasting live, coast to coast, and streaming around the world on the internet. He's prayed with thousands, and now he's ready to pray with you, the dynamic prayer of faith on the all-new Pray America Live. Here, Midnight's Radio Pastor, David Wood. All right, everybody, it is time to... See God move tonight. I am excited to be with you tonight. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, everybody. This is Evangelist David Woods back with you live tonight. And we're going to see great things happen tonight. I've got a great expectation in my spirit. I've been praying and I've been believing and I believe that God's got a miracle for you. And I want to ask you tonight, how did Jesus war in the spirit how was his warfare and i'm going to talk about that tonight but first i want to say that what's going on in the world today is just um in our world in the united states of america and north america is uh, absolutely astonishing uh it's hard it's hard to look at it's hard to watch it's hard not to watch and um a lot has been going through my mind through this time and and um, a lot of questions in the minds of white people. Um, my friends that are African American, if you're Jamaican American, you're, you, you prefer to be called black. Uh, to some of them, no surprise because the racism has been around a long time and is harsh. And I've seen it with my own eyes. I've been to cities where I've seen it and perhaps perhaps you just don't know. Perhaps maybe you you live in a in a in a smaller town, a rural town. And um perhaps you don't fly. You don't go out of the country, you don't go out of the state. But they there are some towns I just want I just was thinking I've ministered in the inner, inner city. I have friends in Compton, California. Been there many times. If you're in Kentucky, that probably means nothing to you. But if I say the word Watts, maybe you'll understand. I have lots of dear friends, perhaps watching tonight in Detroit, Michigan, who I love dearly. 
And if you notice, I don't say I have black friends. I just have friends because I don't look at the color of their skin. It, it, it's, it's irrelevant to me. They're, we are all part of the human race. Nobody is a part of this race or that race. We're all part of the human race. Been to Gary, Indiana. One of, one of a great revival I had there with the bishop over the state of Indiana with the particular denomination, Church of God in Christ. What a great meeting. I miss him. Bishop Sanders. And then my friend, Brother Gray, Robert Gray, in Red Hook, you can literally see the Statue of Liberty across the harbor in Brooklyn, Red Hook, Brooklyn. That's where my mind is going actually tonight. My heart, my spirit, my prayers are going out to the folks that reside in these areas that I had the privilege of going to. And don't forget Oxon Hill, Maryland. Oxon Hill, Maryland. South side of Washington, D.C. I stayed there and ministered there. The pastor has gone on to be with the Lord now. His wife's gone on to be with the Lord. But I remember me and my children and my wife we would take the, the tube, we'd take the, the subway, the train. Every morning, early morning, we would get on there with, we were the only white folks on the train, never felt threatened, never felt, had any bad looks, never. We just enjoyed it. Rode into town and toured Washington, D.C., came back in the evening for our service in Oxon Hill, Maryland a place where very few people actually go. Certainly not tourists don't go there. And then I think of places, Miami, and the list goes on and on and on of places of the inner city where I've had the op awesome opportunity to minister. I've not yet gone to Philadelphia. That was on my list. Oh, East St. Louis, that's another one. But I think it's very interesting As I watch the news, see what's going on. Is it a coincidence that on the heels of the churches being forced to close because of the fear of a virus, that mayhem, destruction has broke off? It's like my daughter says, Dad, I've got plenty enough pictures of, of white guys destroying places. I said, I know, baby, it's not a white or black thing. It's, it's a human, it's a sinful nature thing. Uh, but I had, to, I had to stop and really think about this. Maybe we're getting a glimpse of what life is going to be like without the Holy Spirit because the churches shut down or were forced to shut down. Could it be that the moral compass of those few, the remnant that was going to church Sunday after Sunday, praising, praying, worshiping God, tithing, doing what's right, could it be that they were holding the fabric of this nation together just in their faithfulness? Could it be that the devil has now used this pandemic, the demonic pandemic in our nation and around the world, to really make people sit back and wonder, is it worth it to even go to church anyways? I think that's what's going on. And I think this is a strategy of hell that we better be careful about and we better pray into. I think that's what's happening. I'm on a little bit early tonight, so most people don't. Don't know that I'm on. But my heart really, really just hurts when I see the different memorials damaged. I want to go through and perhaps, you know, um, 
maybe, just maybe, if I just scroll through my timeline here, and just talk to you about what I'm seeing. The pandemic masks speak prophetically of attempt to silence Christians. Interesting. People come up with all kinds of stuff. Protect your home, your family, and community. Patriots should, re should unite. Bricks randomly showing up at, at protests across the United States, mysteriously, not sure where they're coming from. Somebody else says they're about to go buy a gun. It's ser getting serious. You should have already done that. Just remember, if you have to pull the trigger to defend your property and to defend your your life or your family, you will be perhaps years behind a court of law that's very liberal. And um, the cost that is behind that will be enormous. Thank God for our Christian president who the media people are criticizing for holding up the Bible. I kind of see it a little bit differently as a minister of the gospel. And here's how I see it. I think that President Trump, our Christian president, was probably beyond shocked when he, when he heard that the, that the nation's cathedral was attacked and set on fire. I think that was beyond shocking to him. And for him to walk over, it was a big deal. Number one. Number two, it was his prerogative. As long as he, you know, lets Secret Service knows where he's going, he can go wherever he wants to, basically. But I think he held up the Bible not as a prop. I think that, that that's the one of the one of the most stupidest thing I've heard, actually. And perhaps if you're from a carnal mind or if you're from a a worldly perspective, you might look at it that way. But there's been many times where, and I don't know if he, he was doing it this way or not, but it, it comes to my mind as a deliverance minister. It's how many times I prayed over somebody and I put that Bible on their head. I mean, the devil is afraid of that Bible. And I think Trump knows that the devil's afraid of the Bible. And I think deep down inside, our Christian president, somewhere, somewhere from someone, he's getting advice that this is a spiritual warfare. We don't battle against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and wickedness and high places. And the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold. I think that, I think somebody's got to him to let him know that this definitely is a spiritual battle. And personally, I just got the feeling that he was kind of putting the Bible up in the face of the enemy outside of a church. I don't think uh, if it was if the election had been different, I don't think that the others would have done something like that. And I don't think it's a photo op either. I think that that's just uh, silly. No, you wouldn't want me to be a president. You would not want me to be the president. I would run if I knew I would make it, but... <laughs> uh, somebody said, why don't you... Why, why wouldn't I want you to be the president? Because here, here's what I would do. I would round up every looter that destroys businesses. I would round up everyone that sets fire on a building. And I would give them... Uh, a parachute, strap it to their back. I'd give them a, an assault rifle. I'd take them in an airplane way up high, and I would probably fly them over North Korea, open up the hatch and slap them on the back and say, have fun. That's why you don't want me to be the president. Elaine shared a comment that I did, Richmond Police, 
and I've been to Richmond. Those rioters blocked firefighters from burning home with a child in it. Mind of a rioter. I don't care to know about the mind of a rioter. The scripture says the thief cometh not but for first to steal. That's what he does first. His objective is to steal the word out of your heart, but he'll steal whatever he can steal. So um, just looking through and seeing all the comments. Socialism, communism has an agenda to remove liberties. And I was think, that's another thing I was thinking about the other day. Where the scripture says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You could actually put that in reverse. Flip it. Flip that scripture. Instead of saying, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You could say, where the spirit of the Lord is not, there's no more liberty. Angela and I were talking, you know, they're burning down that business in Los Angeles. Can you imagine working all your life, working all your life to get that business up and running? Uh, maybe never come back. Maybe never come back. But we saw it on 9-11. I remember a day, and many of you do too, where you could get on an airplane and you could go right through the gate, take all your family. <laughs> and I'm, I'm young enough to remember, was it Pan Am? Everybody lighting up and smoking cigarettes right on the plane. <laughs> Can you imagine? There was a time when a world existed like that. It's almost hard to believe now. I couldn't wait to get off the plane. I What was I? Fifth grade with my dad flying from Portland to Seattle. First time I ever flew. 1979, 78, 77, somewhere around there. And it was horrible. Choking and hacking and coughing and couldn't wait to get out of that smoke box. That is true police brutality is horrible and it has to stop it has to stop wait a minute astronauts left earth today who knew who knew mm. 89 year old Sorry, sorry, pitiful man on a quest to destroy America. Well, that'll be short-lived. Help him, Lord. There's a good one. Baby geese walking through the drive through at the bank. So that's a, a lot to ponder, a lot to question. Is what's going on right now with the rioting, the looting, is it, would you agree with me that it's a direct relation, a direct correlation to the churches being shut down? I think so. I think it has a lot to do with it. And, um, of course, you have to be, you have to be spiritually minded to think that way if you're not spiritually minded you wouldn't think that way oh praise the Lord well that's just a few of my thoughts from Facebook and um, I'm on early tonight I don't know how many of you are coming on to join me and maybe you'll come on the second hour surprise but uh, I look forward to being with you when I can. And I'd like to hear your comments below. 
I want you to know that during this time, whether it's a pandemic or riding in the streets, you can depend on Jesus and not just at a certain time, but always. There are a few of us who have trouble-free lives. One day I found the most wonderful verse in the Bible that deals with this, and it's Hebrews 2, verse 18 in the Amplified, speaking of Jesus, says, because he himself in his humanity has suffered and been tempted, tested and tried, he is able immediately to run to the cry, assist and relieve those who are being tempted and tested and tried. You know, that verse says Jesus understands what we're going through. And I believe that. He's able to run to us immediately wherever and whenever we need him. And I like that, don't you? He doesn't have to wait a long time. Maybe a doctor or a friend or family member can't get to you in time, but if we call on Jesus right there and then, when we're in trouble, he hurries on the spot to help us, and I've watched it so many times. Ooh, so many times I've watched it, and I'm sure you have too in your own life. And so how does Jesus do spiritual warfare? Well, we have God's word in times of adversity. And the word gives us the power we need to overcome temptations, trials, and tests. Good to see you, Rev, from, from Atlanta, Georgia, the city of peace, Kathy. Yes, I'm on early tonight. I've got plans with my family a little bit later this evening. And the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing and effective it is sharper than any two-edged sword piercing or penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life the soul the immortal spirit and the joints of marrow that is the deepest part of your nature exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of my heart, of your heart. It's a big deal. The scripture continues by saying, not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight. Oh, think about that. Not a cre creature exists that is concealed from the sight of the Lord. He knows everything that's going on. God sees everything we do. He knows all of your thoughts. He is everywhere we are. Now, the devil is not everywhere, but God is everywhere. And you may feel alone, but God is with you. I declare that over your life. God is with you. When you're in trouble, I like knowing that Jesus will run to me and I can totally depend on him. Always. I can always depend on him. Aren't you glad that you can depend on him? Now, I've said this before. I want to keep saying it to you until you're a believer. God has a plan for your success. I can't tell you the difference it made in my life when I found the truth that God loves me and wasn't mad at me. I grew up thinking that God had a big lightning bolt with, with my name on it and a big ugly club and if you ever got around me wham he'd knock me into next year i thought he stood in heaven ready to zap me every time i messed up now you know there is a side of god like that and if it helps you keep the fear of the lord by all means keep on thinking that but listen there's a grace side to god that you got to get acquainted with. You got to get to know. There's a time where you don't ever grieve the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a lot of rec reconciliation. There's going to be a lot of people 
that are looting and killing and how many police officers died? I got the list the other day. Tremendous amount of police officers shot in the head. That's not being reported, by the way. But there's coming judgment for all of this, and God will judge it. And there's a reason people don't live long. It's true. But God is not a gotcha kind of guy, you know. You mess up, he zaps you out of heaven. And for some unknown reason, I always thought that God was going to make me do something I didn't want to do. And Jeremiah 29 verse 11 came alive in my heart. It helped me understand and know that God is not that way. It helped me understand and know him better. You know it. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God is not out to beat your brains out. He wants to bless you. God's plans for your life is bigger than your own. And many people are fearful about giving God their dreams, their ambitions, their goals. Because they think, God, if I give you my dream, if I give you my plan, you're going to take it away. And you're going to reduce it and give it back to me. And that's not the way God does things. Well, the devil will be a snake in your garden. And he'll start treating you, talking to you that way. I, I started to experience some of those thoughts even today, and I know better. Well, maybe I'd have just downsized my printer. Maybe I'd have just not think so large. Maybe I'd have not just get my faith out there so big. No, 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 no. God wants to bless this ministry. Where The scripture says in Psalms, where is the man who fears the Lord? I will teach him how to choose the best and bring him into the circle of blessing. So it's God's will for you to be dreaming bigger. It's God's will for you to be setting your heights larger. It, it pleases him to, to know that you're thinking that he's big enough to handle that kind of a job. So even though people will try to do it, even though the snake in your garden will give you the thoughts to do it, to try to downsize your vision and take it from a 11, 11 by 17 and force it down to a 3 by 5 card, don't yield to that temptation. God is not out to beat your brains out. He wants to bless you. God's plan for your life is bigger than your own. And many people are fearful about giving God their dream because they think he'll take it, reduce it, and hand it back to you. It's not going to happen that way. That's not the way God does things. And whenever you give your life to God, you can expect him to give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. That's Bible. That's truth. That's the gospel. That's Luke 6, verse 38. And if God says it, that settles it. God is on your side. He's not against you. He's for you. Romans 8 says, if God be for you, who dare be against you? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Shall he not with him also freely give us all things? It's a question. He's not going broke. He can do it. Here I am believing for this kind of a machine. Five, six thousand dollars would put it in a box, put it on a crate and deliver it to my door. And I woke up this morning thinking about that particular brand, that particular model. It goes different steps and different sizes. The one I'm looking at is as big as this desk. Not very big. When you consider that they have one that will not fit in my garage and it, the price tag on it is $245,000 brand new on several pallets. So what's $5,000? Why would I reduce it down to a couple of thousand What's $5,000? That's the dream in my heart. That's the vision. Well, how, how big is God? Why would, I, why would I reduce my vision down to a 3 by 5 card and settle for less? And that's what I'm trying to tell you tonight. Stop trying to settle for less. Don't let the snake in your garden do it. Don't let the people around you do it. Don't let your own mind con you out of the blessing. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Come on, somebody. God is a giver. He's not a take -awayer. God wants to give you good things.
not take him away. God is into your success even more than you are. Well, what's the difference in the printer, I asked. Well, one goes real slow and the other one's lightning fast speed. Hey, I want the lightning fast speed. Okay, but Rev, do you really need that? Yeah, uh-huh, because I got a big God and I can believe that one person can write a check for $5,000 and that need would be met. God will speak to somebody and that will happen. But if I were to reduce the vision and go for some piece of junk used, <laughs> I'll probably pay for it again in the long run. So I got to keep it in my heart. I got to keep it in my spirit. That God is all about blessing his children for the work, of, especially for the work of the gospel, especially at getting the Bible out into the minds and into the heart. And if there wasn't ever a day that we needed it, now is the day to put the word of God in the minds and the hearts and the hands of people. But I rem I'm reminded of the year of Jubilee. The real Jubilee. The only way for that to have happened just now was for somebody to manually touch a button on this keypad and nobody touched the button. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every demon power that would try to come against this broadcast and every subsequent broadcast in the name of Jesus. I command you, you filthy, foul, lying devil, get your hands off my equipment. Get your hands off the plans and the purposes of God. I come against every hex, every spell, every curse. I break its power in the name of Jesus, and I send it back to the sender, seven times greater for the power of God to be revealed in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above every other name. Somebody shout amen with me. If you've had years stolen from you by sickness and disease, or broken family situations, or by financial reversals, I want you to take heart. Don't be discouraged. God says in Joel 2.25 that he restores to you the years that have been lost. And this is the message of Jubilee. In biblical times, every 50 years, Israel celebrated the year of Jubilee. Jubilee was a time when God would set right what had, what had gone wrong throughout the previous years. Whatever land had been lost would be returned to its original owners. Those who had become slaves were given their freedom and all debts were cleared, wiped off the books. It was a time like no other. And when Jesus came, he read these words in the synagogue of Nazareth. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal, to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed and broken down by calamity to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound, the Amplified says. Then he said, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your heart while you are present and hearing. Jesus was proclaiming that he is the year of Jubilee. He is your jubilee. What that means to you today is that Jesus came to restore your losses. Whatever has been broken, he can fix and mend. Whatever has been devastated, he can bring healing. 
God has provided the way. Your part is to believe him. Step out in faith. Learn to claim it by faith, like the Bible says. Frankly, if you're a believer, you ought to answer the question, what is it that I'm claiming? And if the answer is nothing, you're in trouble. Oh, yeah. If you're not claiming anything like you're supposed to, you're in trouble. Just putting in your time, just doing what you do. You've got, you got to use your faith. You just don't have faith. you got to use your faith. As others will come in the room tonight, as I started early, talking about how did Jesus do spiritual warfare. Somebody th said, I didn't think he did at all. Oh, yes, he did. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. <laughs> oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There will be forever of his saving grace. Let me lift my voice. Home at last, home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, hallelujah, I forgot the words. <laughs> That's all right. I've been praying for several of you today, as a matter of fact. Good to see Kathy in Georgia. Good to see Rev in Georgia. Ron and Karen and Linda in Oregon. Nina, great to see you tonight. Pastor George, great to have you with me. Washington State. And Sister Paulette in South Dakota. I prayed over your offering, Paulette. Your family. Father, we lift up those that are watching, whether it be live or rerun. I pray right now for the power of the Holy Ghost to fall upon my brother and my sister. Renew their strength, O oh God. Help them to keep the joy through all of the heartache and the sadness that we see. Why do the heathen rage? They're raging in the streets. God, we ask for a miracle outpouring and a change of lives. If ever we needed revival, it's now. want to see him look upon his face there will be forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice tears all past home at last oh yeah we're going someday very soon very soon we're going we're gonna go be with the Lord gonna get out of this mess and it'll no longer be a president by the way it'll be King Jesus King Jesus what a mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. 
What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, sing it with me. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. I'm here in my secret place. A special office that was built for me. Had it for 15 years, this portion of my house. Children know that this room is off limits. The oldest children know. The younger ones are still learning. <laughs> Once in a while they barge in, whether I'm on the air or not, they don't care. But this is the secret place, a place of reverence, a place of study, a place of prayer. Two and a half, three years ago, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to my heart. He'd say, I'd be in Atlanta, and he'd say, search out this piece of equipment, and I would search it out. I'd go to Alabama, he'd say, search out this microphone, see if you can find it. And I'd find a lot of this equipment for pennies on the dollar, and I would buy it, and I would stuff it in our trailer. And at first, my wife became so irritable. What are you doing this for? I said, the Lord's speaking to my heart. And I started buying things. I had no idea there would be a pandemic. I would have no idea that I would be somewhat forced off the road. Being on the road is our livelihood. Evangelism is our livelihood. It's what we've been called to do. And um, we just started gathering from my limited knowledge, all the stuff that I had. I had some things for radio. Got this board. This radio board came out of a studio, radio studio in Iowa, and um, two thousand dollar dollar board or more, and I I got it for eight hundred dollars. It just looking back, my wife was saying today, she said, "Did you have any idea that?" I said, "No, I just I just obeyed the Lord." Now we have lights, we have cameras, we, and the Lord said, "Go on every night, every night, give the word of God." in your secret place. Having no idea a pandemic was coming. What was it, three weeks before the pandemic broke out? We started in this secret place, hanging rails and lights and systems, and you ought to see it in here, it's really remarkable. And now the Lord is saying, get ready to publish the good news and print right from your house. And the piece of equipment that we're looking at is, is phenomenal. $5,000 cash will take care of it. We went to the leasing company and I, I just, a believer told me, said leasing is fleecing. Okay. All right. So uh, somebody said, let's go to the bank. I said, how about if we just wait a little bit give God time to move there's somebody who would see themselves investing the five thousand dollars instead of an investment on the stock market that's bound to crash into the publishing of the gospel these messages you're hearing should be in little booklets I don't have any with me but you know what I'm talking about like the little Kenneth Hagin booklets that size I can put out on a machine like that ten to 10 to 20,000 booklets. Easy. And then we can put it up online and people can read it. And I don't have the $5,000, but I took it to the Lord and the Lord said, I've got people that love your ministry and love what you do that will stand with you. I said, okay, Lord, I'm totally trusting in you. Just like I've always done, like I always will do, I trust you to put it together. We have some equipment that is on lease for our mailing ministry. 
That's coming in on Friday. But I'm talking about the big monstrous machine that will crack out our booklet makers. Mike Murdoch and others have been on my case for years. Write a book, write a book, write a book. <laughs> and I guess that I knew and understand enough about it to where I didn't have the machinery, didn't want to job it out. We can do it right here. Right here. We can do everything right here. And lo- the, lo- the Spirit of the Lord said in my prayer time, launch the harvest. So that's what we're doing. In faith, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it in faith. In my prayer life, I had to get in faith over this. I, 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 I had a hard time. I don't know why it is I had a hard time believing for $5,000 when I believe God for, what is this, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in this room? Both radio and television, both. It's amazing. Well, it's taken nine years, but put the television side together and, and the radio. And it's like the enemy hit us with the phones and the phones got went to the shop and then he hit us with the lease. And and I, I, say, I have to keep reminding myself over and over, this is not David Wood's ministries, this is God's ministry. Say amen, somebody. This is the Lord's ministry. And I know God's a big God and he's going to do it. Even before I went on the air tonight, I was so overcome with joy to see my partners at the first of the month giving and some of them giving over and above what they normally pledge. Jim and Joanne from Kentucky, nobody like him. Nobody like him. Highly anointed of the Lord to hear from God. I value them. I not only value Jim and Joanne in their relationship with our family, but I value their ministry and their, their, their them as people. Elisa, another one from Kentucky. Elisa, it may seem small to you, but it's big to me. A $20.20 every month is big. And I prayed over that when I woke up this morning. Ron and Karen from Portland. It never ceases to amaze me how God uses both of you in your faith. Your faith is big. And that blesses me. And you're close to me. Look, Look I, don't I don't just have everybody over to my house. You know that. But it's great to have them around. I love being around faith people. You know what I'm saying? And Emily, Emily, you're another 2020 giver. Every month, $20.20 from Alabama. Thank you, Emily, and I pray for your family. Yes, and the prophetic flow is over your life, Emily. Fayette, Alabama. My pastor Roy and Karen, what jewels they are in Litchfield, Kentucky. Dedicating the whole portion of the Sunday's offering on the second Sunday of the month, every month towards us. Sometimes I wonder if I could make it without their help. Oh, glory to God. So that was all before the program even began. All those wonderful givers. But if we're going to do this with this machine, I hear the Lord say, be not weary in well-doing. The right machine can't just be a machine. It has to have a a finisher on it. Smart operation panel. 220 sheet single pass document feeder. Paper trays. Holds up the 550 sheet papers. 100 sheet bypass. I don't know a lot about this. I know what I want to do. There it is. Brand new. I want you to stretch your hand to it right now. And say it out loud. Say David Woods Ministries has this paid in full. Come on. Put it in the comments if you want to. But say it out loud. Say we declare that this comes to David Woods Ministries paid in full. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, 
We say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. We don't doubt in our heart what we believe, but we have what we say we have. In Jesus' name, $5,000 comes to us for the work of the ministry. Not for our lust, not for our greed, but the, for the work of God. Come on, say it again. Say, Jesus, bring it. Bring it, Lord. We believe you, Father. We believe that this is your word, and this is your will for the word to be published. Scott, 4 o'clock today, I begin to pray for you. I begin to pray for you 4 o'clock today. Some of you are shocked I'm on a little early. I, I just, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I just, I love being with you, and I know more watchers and listeners come on a little later, but I'm talking tonight, endeavoring to talk to you about how Jesus did spiritual warfare. I think it'll help you. I used to think spiritual warfare, oh, by the way, if you want to be a part of this vision, what would it take if it's $5,000 for that machine? Is that, is that 50, that's five people giving a thousand or 50 people giving a hundred, right? Is that right? That, that's actually, when I say it like that, actually I can see it happening. Why don't you, if you give tonight, put on there, this is towards the printing press. Say, so put, put it towards the printing press. That would be good. That way we could designate it and start building and I could tell you how much is there. Who knows, maybe somebody will give us another matching grant fund. You never know. You never know what might happen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I used to think that, and by the way, go to monthlypartners.com. Go there and, and do that right now. I used to think the spiritual warfare was screaming at the devil in prayer. I rebuke you! One day, the Holy Ghost began to speak to my heart. How'd you like to be God and have to listen to you? <laughs> Take a look and see how Jesus did warfare. And I did, and I found out that the devil didn't control... couldn't control Jesus because Jesus walked in love not because of the pitch of his voice in Matthew 22 36 in the Amplified the Pharisees asked Jesus teacher which kind of commandment is great and important the principal kind in the law some are light which are heavy they were asking what is the deepest thing that you can teach us? And Jesus' reply was, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, intellect, and you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. Understand, first of all, that you don't have to scream to fight the battle like Jesus did. How did Jesus do spiritual warfare? can't fight a spiritual battle with something you don't have. Many people can never walk in love because they have never received the love of God for themselves. Knowing something in our heads is one thing and knowing by revelation is another. But if you really know the love of God, no matter what you go through, nothing will be able to steal that love away from your heart. Oh, I feel that. So Jesus ministered through the love of God by following him, so can we. And of course, Jesus fought his battles with the word. He is the word. He spoke the word right back and said, get me behind me, Satan. The Holy Spirit wants to work through your prayers in the same way.
I found out most people what they want when they meet me is they just want to be loved. They're hurting and they want somebody to put their arms around them and just say, I understand. Or maybe you don't understand, but you say it's, it's going to be all right. Or I understand what you're going through. I understand the hurt. I understand the pain. But if you don't understand it, you wouldn't say that. But maybe you just say, it's going to be all right. I'm here to listen. Somebody just needs to hear somebody say, I love you. God loves you. You got to fight like Jesus fought. How do you do that? In the love of God. Staying in love. Walking in love. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you for the victory, Lord. It's what we need today more than anything. More than anything. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Listen, I want to encourage you, don't draw back. I wouldn't trade places with anyone else on the earth. I'm a happy man because I'm walking with God and fulfilling his destiny in my life. And I'm not saying I don't have challenges. I, I, I face impossible situations sometimes, but I decided a long time ago that I would never quit. I would never draw back. If things got hard in life, you got to make that up in your mind. Say it out loud. Say, I'm never drawn back. I'm not quitting. Quitting is not an option. In Hebrews 10, 38 says, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And that phrase draw back means to compromise. To compromise, to give up. To give in. I told you earlier, if you're just joining me, I talked about it. Don't ever let the devil take your 11 by 17 dream and smash it down to a 3 by 5 card. Don't ever let him do that. That's drawing back in your faith. Jesus. Pastor D, you about knocked me out of my chair just now. I believe that's going to be matched dollar for dollar. Oh, hallelujah. I think I'm just stunned. I want to shout and come out of this chair, but I think I'm stunned. <laughs> come on. Now, now I got to I don't know if D and Mike you came on earlier, but I said the temptation to dream smaller is going to be there. Um, I wish I had a picture of this. This is a small machine, although it's a big one and it's expensive and it and it does the job what we're wanting it to do. But there are machines. This machine is this. But there are machines that fill up a whole page. They go. And the price tag on those are $245,000. It's more than some people's mortgages. And um, I was tempted in my mind to draw back and, and reduce the vision. Yeah, I'll run down to Los Angeles. I'll hook up the trailer. I'll settle. I'll just come up with $1,000, $2,000. And I'll go get something that's used and smaller. And, and it dawned on me. That's a temptation of the enemy in my mind. And I prayed through on that thing. And the Lord said, where's the man who fears the Lord? I'll teach him how to choose the best and bring him into the circle of blessing. And I went to Angela and I said, Angela, we got to pray. And she said, just believe. 
I'm here. I am God's man of faith and power. And sometimes I get around my wife and I feel like I'm God's man of paste and flour. What you talking about now? I said, what do you mean? Just believe. I've been believing. She said, no, you're not. You need to believe God for the full $5,000 and just go get what's right and have it delivered on a pallet to your house and just run your booklets and print it right out of your house. It, this is going to put pressure on me to write is what's going to happen. Yep. That's what it's going to do. It's going to put a, more of a demand on me to write. And so I said, all right, all right, we'll do that. And so I just started praising the Lord. And she said, it won't take very many people at all just to sow that $5,000. She said, it, it can be delivered right to the house. I said, okay. So I want to talk to you today about not drawing back in your vision. Hebrews 10, 38. The just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Start believing bigger than what you're believing for. And I'm preaching to myself now. Start believing God for more. More. Candy, believe God for bigger. Believe God for more. Believe God for it. He's a big God. And that word draw back means to compromise. Well, we could get junk from Los Angeles, run down there. No, we can't. That's not the kind of God we serve. We're going to believe God for the best. And that's what I want every believer that's watching me and with me tonight. Somebody uh, sent us money to go to the beach, to gas money. And I found out I've got points I can use for a hotel at the beach. So tonight we're going down to the beach just for the day. It's only an hour away. The beach is an hour that way and the mountain slopes are an hour this way. So no big deal. But but we just didn't want to spend, you know, any ministry money. We wanted to go. But and here the Lord put it upon somebody's heart. Wow. So we made the reservation and the car's packed. Everybody's ready. So I'm going to go down there and pray and play with the children and seek the Lord. We'll be back again and uh, be back on just down for the day and back up. One of my greatest revelation came when somebody gave me money to go to the beach there in Tampa, Florida, Clearwater, actually. I took Marilyn Hickey. I took Charles Capps. I took Kenneth Copeland. I took Kenneth Hagen. I took everybody's tapes. That's how long ago it was. On Angels. And three days in my hotel room. Didn't even come out. Just studied everything. I, and boy, God gave me some of the most tremendous revelation on Angels. And I thank God I did because I would not know that I would need need to know that information later on in my life and my own experiences. So it just kind of makes me wonder, you know, here God supplied for me to go again, not so long, but what is he going to talk to me about this this time as I as I get away? Wouldn't it be great tonight? <laughs> if we didn't draw back and we knew, go ahead, put the order in, it's paid in full. We don't need no stinking leasing company. No, we don't need no stinking bank. We've got the people of God are sowing. That's what I felt like saying on the phone, but I didn't. I just held back. But God's soul is grieved when we when we hold back, when we draw back or compromise or give in or give up and force our dream from off. An, I'm going to pull an, an 11 by 17 out of the copy machine that we have now, and I'm going to put a a three by five card, and I'm going to show you the difference. And some of you are forcing your dream, your God given dream, you're forcing it off an 11 by 17 on a three by five. And God says, uh, My soul is not pleased with that. It takes no pleasure in that. And so I was really, I was really kind of, well, I'm feeling good now, T. You got me, you got me fired up now. And uh, could it be the Lord's going to give me the other $2,500 tonight? And we'll order it. I will take one of these cameras out there and I will videotape it and we will start mailing out little booklets. If you're on my list, you'll get one. I'd like to do it every week. Is that asking too much? Well, maybe we'll start once a month. There I go again, drawing back. <laughs> Come on, Lord. Increase my faith to believe. Not increase my own faith is what I need to do. We don't bring God pleasure by quitting or giving up or pull, curtailing the vision back. And we give up under pressure when things get rough. And what does God pleasure in when we stand on his word? Trust him. Believe that he's fulfilling his promises. 
So glory to God, somebody's giving the $2,500. Dean Mike, Pastor Dean Mike from your church. Bless you. Thank you. Glory to God. Who else would do the other $2,500? That'd be 25 people giving $100 tonight. We could do that. It'd be met. Man. But take a look. Hebrews 10, 38 says that. But take a look at verse 39. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. That scripture is referring to us. We're not quitters. We're winners. We're not coming in fifth and sixth and seventh place. We're coming in first place. And we, we don't compromise or give up under pressure. I'm preaching to myself tonight. And if we don't make that choice in our minds, then the devil can beat up on us for the rest of our lives. We have to make it clear to him that we will live by faith and not draw back. Say it out loud. Say, I'm going to live by faith and not draw back. This is how Jesus fought his battles. And then we have to remind him because he forgets. Remind him of your choice right now. As you say it out loud with me, say, I am not one of those who draw back. I am not a quitter. I am a winner. I am not a reducer. I am an enlarger. Hey, I like that. <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a reducer. I'm a I'm an enlarger. We're enlarging the vision around here. Might as well. <sighs> oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Let me take a praise break a minute. done so much for us who's watching me tonight Rick and Jackie from Atlanta Doris from Henderson Candy from is it Yakima or Spokane brother Eric I love you brother <laughs> such good times Kathy from Georgia Yes, Mike and Dee, what treasures you are to the work of God. I'm looking for it, y'all. I'm excited. Bless them, Father. Bless them above all that they can ever ask or think. And we'll have this $5,000. It's got a finisher on it, folks. I mean, it hole punches, it, it staples, it folds, it bends, it does backflips. We're going to put out our own little booklets, and it's about time. It's about 30 years overdue. But the Lord knows my heart. Pastor Don, good to see you. Pastor Jerry, good to see you, brother. Trust your church is back in service now. You're indoors. Glory. Rev from Atlanta is watching. Jim and Joanne from... Joanne just keeps saying, Lord, put a million dollars in his account. I said, Lord, I don't need a million dollars. I just need... <laughs> There we go again, drawing back. Lord, help me, Lord, help me. I'm not drawing back in the name of Jesus. I agree with you, Joanne, and I'm going to stop saying that. We declare that it comes. Yes, Tammy. Tammy, I prayed for your, um, for Chrissy today. I sent her an email. I don't know if she got it. Scott, I prayed for you today. So many of these folks I pray for every morning when I wake up. Ron and Karen, I love you. Nina, I love you. Pastor George, I love you. Everyone that's watching today. Here's what I had to learn. I had to learn that I had to sow into dreams of other people before I could reap my own dream. And this is so important for you to get a hold of this tonight. How? You encourage someone. You pray for them. You, you sow seed into their dream. Ephesians 6, 8 says, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Get that. Get that in your spirit. Get that in the overflow tonight of your mind. Ephesians 6, 8. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. That's David was paraphrased, but you read it. 
If you're going to see your purpose come to pass, you've got to bless the purposes of others. And this is one of the most powerful truths along the way that I've learned. Remember Joseph? Some of you preachers knew I was going right there. Joseph, he sowed his interpretation of the dreams of Pharaoh's butler and the baker while in prison, asking them to remember him, and they forgot. But two years later, 24 months later, the, the chief butler remembered Joseph's accurate dream interpretations and recommended him to Pharaoh. Wow. And ultimately released Joseph from prison and placed him second in command over all of Egypt, the whole nation. And this fulfilled Joseph's long-held dream that began when he was only 17. Glory to God. Come on in, Rita. The water's fine. You'll receive a blessing. Praise the Lord. Somebody just sowed $2,500 towards our machine. Uh, you know him. Thank you, Jesus. God's going to give us the best. The best is yet to come. Lord, touch Tia. Touch her body right now. We come against any bruises. Lord, heal her up. My wife hurt her foot the other day, and I put my hand on it and prayed over it. Within 12 hours, it was like it never happened. She was dancing and happy around the house. She said, look, 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 my foot, like it never even happened. I said, that's the power of God. So, T, I pray right now, nothing missing, nothing broken over you. In the name of Jesus, I come against bruises and brokenness and scrapes and Lord, heal her right now. Touch her right now in the name of Jesus. But I believe we must sow into the dreams of others before we can reap our own dream. And it happened with Joseph. And Ephesians 6, 8 says, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Sometimes when I've wanted to do something for God and then some other ministry started doing it, I became so upset with them. <laughs> uh, and in the end, I found out I didn't need to be upset because the Lord was working it around another way. If you'll sow into their purposes, I'll bless yours. That's what I heard the Lord say. And so over the years, I learned to bless into other ministries that were, uh, I needed a building. I needed a building. And I could not find a building for our 250 members at the time. And I sat at the table and ate lunch. Frustrated, tired of running around the city trying to find a place. I wanted a church building. And um, I remember eating my lunch and I looked up out the window across the street and it's like out of the blackberry bushes, a cross, a part of a cross was showing just a part. It was all covered up. But it's like the Lord fixed my eyes on that cross. I got so excited thinking what I might be seeing was a church buried in blackberry bushes. So I... um. I threw the money on the table. I forgot my lunch. I jumped up and ran out, jumped in the car, drove across the busy street, 82nd Street, pulled up on that property, and sure enough, it was an old Baptist church covered in blackberry bushes, just sitting there. So I had a hard time finding the, um, the people that owned it. And I said, Lord, how do I get in touch with these people? It's nearly impossible. They, they've got a funny corporation to hide themselves. It's off in Idaho, and here we are in pro property is in Portland. And this is funny. How do I do this? The Lord said, so into another ministry trying to do something with a building. So there was a great ministry out of Fort Worth that everybody knows, and they were building an office in Canada. And the Spirit of the Lord said, so into that building, and I'll return to you your own building. Man, I couldn't wait. I, I, 
I, I went to the checkbook. I found out what was in there and I emptied the whole checkbook into that ministry. I don't sow into every ministry. I sow into ministries that I know are going to produce harvest. Some ground is not worth sowing into. Well, how come he doesn't give over there or give over? Because it's not worth it. There's no spiritual fruit being born. 30, 60, or 100 fold. So, so Ephesians 6, 8, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And I sowed into that particular ground. Within 24 hours, I had the name and the phone number and all the information that was impossible to get of this building. I told him my intention. He said, meet me there the next day. I drove up to the lot. There he was. He said, we don't have any plans for this property. He said, uh, if you're going to use it for a church, there's a lot of fixing up to do. He said, how about if I give it to you for a year rent free? Had a baptismal tank in it, had everything. It needed paint, it needed gravel, it needed carpet. There's a lot it needed. I think we ended up being in there for four or five years for free. And then a powerful attorney group came along after we fixed it up and spent the $3 million to buy the whole place and leveled the building. But I think about that, how I acquired it. I'm still trying to think about how to keep it once you acquire it. <laughs> uh, but but how I acquired it was what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Find somebody's dream and sow into it. And I have a dream to publish the good news. I have a dream to publish and to print these gospel materials into the lives of people. And we put out a monthly magazine every every month. And I told you earlier, if you're just joining me, some of these printing presses, the one that I'm looking at was $245,000, more than some people's home. It wouldn't fit in my garage. That's how big it is. And that's not the one we're getting. Notice where my faith just went. Oh, Lord, don't draw back. Don't draw back. Don't draw back. Don't draw back in your faith. There's a $5,000 machine and we're getting that in the name of Jesus coming to us. This right here, this piece on the end is what's called the finisher. It's what makes the booklets. And it uh, comes with the software and the training and all that good stuff. We're not drawing back. We're sewing into other people's dreams. And early on in life, this was a big deal that I had to learn. If, if you want something you never had, you got to do something you never done. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Ephesians 6, 8. And I had to learn that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody's going to sow into somebody's dream tonight. We've been sowing and sowing and sowing. We are sowers into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father, for the other $2,500 that's coming to us. We believe we receive it. Come on, say it with me. Not everybody's going to see the importance of this dream. And I understand that. But there are many that are going to understand the importance of publishing the good news gospel. There's a special blessing that comes when you publish the good news gospel. When you send out the word, it will not come back void. It will go forth and accomplish. Ah, thank you, Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. When I went on tonight, I didn't know how it was going to happen. We needed the $5,000. And now we only need the 2500 and it's coming. God honors faith where he finds it. I'm telling you, I feel the blazing glory of God right now. Every night, night after night, I'm feeling the blazing glory of God. I hope this is helping you. I hope you're getting this tonight. I hope this is settling down in your heart and in your spirit. God is no respecter of persons in the sense that he would ever favor one individual over another it is faith that God honors whenever he finds it and may I add I had one person give a large amount one time and somebody in the room says oh they're rich I said they're not rich I said they're just walking in tremendous faith some people give everything they've got for the now 
Some people give what they have. It's faith that God honors whenever he finds it. And regardless of a person's background, nationality, social status, or which church they attend, it's faith that God honors. And Hebrews 11 outlines for us many of the men and women of faith in the Bible and what they accomplished by simply believing God's word to them. These were people from all walks of life, but they acted on their faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 defines faith as being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. In other words, we can believe God to move in a situation even before we see the evidence of his moving. That's faith in action. It's faith in action, believing for what has not happened. Stacy, I want to grab the phone. I want to hear your story. And Tia, I wish you have the confidence to tell your story because people have been sowing into this ministry and they're getting harvest back. Miracles are coming towards them and I want to hear their story. I'll have to leave my desk to get the phone that's not in here tonight. Our phones are down so we have to do it a little differently. Do you mind? Can you can you wait while I get the phone? Do you mind? Let's hold on. When the professional phone doesn't work, we we go to the trusted little phone here. Call our ministry prayer center and hit the right buttons. It'll come through. I want to hear your story tonight, Stacy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for staying with me while I went and got my phone. No matter what test or need has come into your life, believe, believe that God is going to move on your behalf. Say that out loud. Say, I believe God is moving on my behalf. Stand on God's word and be assured that the situation is going to turn around. It may take time. Yes, it's the same number, Stacey. Yes. It may take time and there's no guarantee the situation will turn around exactly like you want it. But God's faithful to honor faith where he finds it. Come on. Here am I, Lord. I got the faith of God working on the inside of me. And I'm releasing my faith in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the faith of God in Jesus name in the name of Jesus Lord I've got the faith to believe that we receive and father you said that the ones that sow towards the second portion of the 2500 receive a double portion all those that sow into this ministry of publishing the good news are receiving a double portion from heaven and I thank you for it Lord thank you Jesus We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I imagine you've probably just as tired as I get when you have the enemy sitting in the middle of your affairs. I I understand that, the weariness that can come on you. Causing trouble in your family, messing with your finances and your friendships, and it doesn't have to be that way. And I want to read you a scripture, why it doesn't have to be that way. All right, Stacy, 
I want to hear the praise report. You're calling from uh, calling from Texas, right? Yes. Yeah. Tell me what's going on. I've been praying for you. You've been sowing, and you've got a good testimony to share. I do. Um, I'm currently in school. Yes. Um, I'm going to college. I've completed my first year. Um, God provided all the way for it for the first year, and I know he'll continue to provide for the rest of it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on that, on that same note, however, uh, though, I, uh, my federal grant, the FAFSA or Pell Grant, whatever you, y'all call it. Yeah. Um, it didn't, it won't cover all my expenses for this next year. Hmm. And I was uh, trying to come up, I was like, Lord, you know, I'd like to be able to try to work or do something to kind of help make some of the money for it. Yeah. And um, I, my mother-in-law, she, uh, she makes these things called cake balls. And it's like a cake mix, and you put icing in it, and then you dip it in, like, white chocolate or milk chocolate or something. Wow. And they're really good. Sounds, and, sounds uh, good. She, <laughs> they are. She makes them for, like, holidays and stuff. And I was like, well, so many people that we know like them. Yeah. I thought, well, you know, maybe I could make some and sell them. Sure, right. And I prayed about it. We made some up uh, because uh, we had some extra stuff we needed to use anyway. And so we went ahead and made some up. And I prayed on it the night before we were going to go uh, deliver them. I said, Lord, if this is something that you want me to do, if this is something that um, you want me to keep doing to help pay for my college, <clears throat> To bring in, you know, money for books and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, let it work out. Yes. If not, then, uh, you know, let me know. Tell me something. Mm-hmm. And I went on to sleep and we got up the next morning and we got our stuff together. And we got them in the boxes and everything and... <laughs> We went to our chiropractor because um, he, all, you know, he always likes them. He'll request them and stuff like that. And I thought that I was going to have to go around town and go around the square and talk to people and this one thing and another. I did not have to do that. Really? What happened? Really? I had. I. I think I had around. If I had sold everything the way I had kind of planned it out, I would have made for the day about $80. Wow. I stopped at the chiropractor's first because, you know, I had already told them I was going to do it, and they said, come by and see us. Yeah. And I went by there, and I was talking to them, and um, the receptionist, she bought some, and then the other girl that works there, she bought some. And then she gave me extra money, and I told her, I said, do you need change or, or what? And she said, no, this is to help. Just keep it. It's to help. Wow. And I was like, really? And she said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Favor and blessing. Said, yeah, and, and just wait. After uh, they had bought theirs, I had some left, and our chiropractor came in there to his office. And he said, what do you got left? And I told him. And he said, how much is it for what you have left? And I was like, really? Because that's, that's a lot. And he said, no, how much is it for you, what you have left? I said, $35. Mm-hmm. For the whole rest of he it. Said, Lo- for the whole rest of it. He took, he got the rest of it. He pulled a $100 bill out of his pocket and handed it to me. And I said, well, I'll get you some change if you'll give me a few minutes because I'll have to go get it. And he said, no, I don't want your change. He said, you're doing it for a good cause. And he said, you guys have come by here and given us cake balls for different seasons and different holidays and stuff like that. He said, 
pictures. Look at God. Jesus. Look at God. Now that's favor, Stacy, and that's your harvest from off all that seed sowing you've been doing. And you got a hold of a revelation. You got a hold of it. I watched it. I said, she's sowing daily. She's sowing daily. Every day she's got a seed in the ground. She's going to monthlypartners.com every day and she's sowing daily. I don't mean to embarrass you, but you did. You were. And look at God. I was doing the best I could. And um, I thought I was absolutely dumbfounded and I was speechless. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I, I, when I talk about it, I still shake like I'm shaking now. <laughs> because, Stacy, the Lord is teaching you through life how a harvest comes from seed in the ground. You got your seed in the ground. Now harvest is coming. Now what I want you to do is I want you to start expecting that that happens to you all the time. And I want you to say this out loud. It's a little a little odd for you to, to hear it, maybe for the first time. But I want you to say it out loud. Say these kind of things happen to me all the time. These kind of things happen to me all the time. Uh huh. And I want you to say that every time you sow into this ministry, every time you give, every time you, every day you wake up, say good things happen to me all the time. This is the way I have to talk into my ministry. And there are ministries that wake up every day and they struggle and they don't know why they're gonna, how they're gonna make it and. They don't know if they can pay the bills, and they might as well quit, and they might as well retreat, and they might as well get, withdraw, and it's because they're not saying the right things. And so you're on a roll right now, Stacy. You're on a roll in faith, and I want you to keep rehearsing the blessing of the Lord <clears throat> and say that every day. Good things happen to me all the time. Good things come to me all the time. I'm a sower. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. And I'm on the, the, the seed faith of abundance, and it's happening in my life every day. And you start talking like that, and keep giving, and that hundred will turn into a thousand. I'm telling you oh, because... I, I, I do not doubt it. And what is... Uh, you know, I should have had the 80 for the day, and I come out with 160. Uh-huh. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of what God wants to do for people who move in faith. And, I got so tickled at my husband when I told him about it. Yeah. Well, they we must be the they, they must be good. It must be good. People must like it, right? Oh, they do. Like they they jump at it. I had to go out <laughs> there today cuz one lady bought a box but she didn't have the money and I told her it was okay, you know, she could give it to me later. Yeah. And she brought it up there today, and I had to go get it. And they said, well, when you make some more, let us know. Right, and somebody in Atlanta is wishing they had some. And somebody in Kentucky right now is wishing they had some. And it's just going to be like that for you. Good people are in your life every day. And things like that happen to you every single day. I want to hear you say it again. Good things happen to me all the time. Come on now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, you are a seed sower. Every day I wake up, I look, I say, what is Stacy doing? Now, it wasn't an enormous amount, but it was just that consistently giving over and over. And I linked my faith with you. And I believe the best is yet to come. Amen? Amen. Hey, I believe God will pay off the school bill in its entirety. Can we? Do you have the faith to believe that? Oh, yes, because I have at least one more year, if not four. All right, let's agree. Let's agree. We'll touch and agree. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in agreement for Stacy's school bill. But Father, there's more than enough that's going to meet her need. And we call this school bill paid in full. Good things happen to her all the time. And this is just scratching the surface of what you want to do in her life. We command this school bill to be paid in full in the name of Jesus. Devil, get your hands off of it. You loose it and let it go. And we thank you, Father, for miracle money coming to Stacy in Texas right now. Right now. Right now. Do it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you agree, Stacy? I do. Amen. Thank you for letting me know. And if somebody wants a cake ball, they need to let us know and we'll get it to them, right? Hey, if I knew how to ship these things because they have to stay cold, if I knew how to do it, I would. Let me tell you, there's a way to do it. 
the Native Americans can take a fish out of the ocean, Pacific Ocean, put it on dry ice, and it'll be there in 12 hours. It can be done. Pray into that, Stacy. Into that, do some research. <laughs> yep, yeah. Pray into it because this is the way God takes a creative idea and talent in your hands and faith in your spirit, seed in the ground, and it'll make you a millionaire. I'm telling you. Thanks, Stacy, for calling. I love it. I love the testimony praise reports. Call me again. Hey, glory to God. Somebody else got a testimony. Call me right now. 1-888-701-4483. Ah, it excites me to hear people's blessing. I was praying the other day and I said, Lord, what about this carbuncle gate? And that just comes strong in my spirit. The Lord said, look it up. And I looked it up. I looked it up and I found out that the carbuncle is like a red garnet. And um, it's the only stone where if you put it in darkness, it, it, it like produces its own light within darkness and people of the 11th and 12th century thought it was a magical stone it's not magical it's just a creation of the lord but the bible says he'll create your gates are going to have a bit made out of carbuncle or red garnets that light up and i got to praying about that and the lord said i'm going to light up the right gates to walk through hey you don't walk through every gate you walk through the gates that he lights up for you well, why is that so different than him saying, the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And he'll give me carbuncle gates and I'll walk through the right ones and I'll stay away from the ones that are not lit up. Hey! Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, hallelujah. Glory! Jesus! Thank you, Father, for your blazing glory. Malachi 4, 2 and 3. But for who, but for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. You will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. And then you will trample down the wicked. And they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, saith the Lord Almighty. And for those who are tired of the enemy standing in the middle of your affairs, you're tired of him causing trouble in your family and messing with your relationships. It doesn't have to be that way. Take a look at that scripture, Malachi 4. It says the son of righteousness, not S-O-N, S-U-N. That's not an error. That's not a, a typographical error. That's not a mistake. Malachi was talking about a bright blazing glory. The wings he refers to aren't birds' wings. They're flames of the fire that are shaped like wings. My God. Notice the scripture. The most exciting of all the scripture is the fact that Malachi didn't say he will go out. He said you will go out. Hey! <laughs> You're going to go out. I'm going out right now. I'm going out into your home. I'm going out into your device. I'm going out through the printed press. I'm going out through radio. I'm going out through television. I'm going out through every means that I can do it. But I can't do it on my own. I've got to have the blazing glory go out before me. You and I are the ones who will ensure the devil's defeat. He's defeated. We all have the power we need to destroy the devil's works and kick him out of our affairs. And all the words that you say, coupled with your faith, are going to pull the glory out of you. You're going to walk in that glory. Come on, I said you're going to walk in that glory right in 
right in the face of all the trouble hell tries to give you. Hey! Come on! Every bit of hell that tries to come against you, I rebuke it. I bind it up in the name of Jesus. It tries to come over the affairs of your family and affairs of relationships and friendships. I take authority. The blazing glory of the Son of Righteousness steps into your life tonight and puts to flight every demon power. You're the one who will go out into the world with this blazing glory. The same glory that raised Jesus from the dead. It's that same glory that you'll use to trample down the enemy like ashes underneath your feet. Go read it again. Malachi 2. Malachi 4, 2 and 3. I want you to read it till, you, till you're running out the stall like a calf, trampling the devil under your feet like ashes. Like the ash heap? Hey, glory! Thank you, Jesus! Tell the devil I've been sowing into another man's dream. God's going to come into my dream with a blazing glory. The Son of Righteous. I gotta read it again. I can't get away from it. For those who revere my name, the Son, S U N, of Righteousness, will rise with healing in its wings. Let the Son of Righteousness come on your back. Let the Son of Righteousness come on your bloodstream. Let the Son of Righteousness come on your body in the name of Jesus. And you're gonna go out and leap like a calf released from the stall. And you'll trample down the devil. And there'll be ashes underneath your feet. Says the Lord God Almighty. Woo! Glory! I'm not talking about something out of somebody's book. I'm talking about the, the minor prophet Malachi. I'm talking about the prophetic word of the Lord that's spoken over you. The word of God. I'm going to fly away. Don't get too comfortable with this broken down earth. I know you like our Christian president, and that's fine, but it wasn't meant to be that way. It's meant to have King Jesus ruling from Jerusalem, and that's what's going to happen. The world is rocking and a reeling. Earthquakes in diverse places, that's coming. Hurricane season, that's coming. The earth is rocking and reeling with diseases and corruption and violence. It's the reason why God flooded the whole earth was the violence was too much for him to take. But this time he's not going to do it with water. This time it's burning up, baby. It's burning up. I'm so glad, Stacy, you shared that message. In the name that is above every other name, I declare miracles coming to you. I declare the word of the Lord over you. I got to go back to that scripture. I got to go back to it. I, I can't get it out of my spirit. Hey, hey, thank you, Jesus. For those of you who revere the name, what name? The name of Jesus. The Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in its wings, and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. Mike and Dee, are you leaping yet? Come on. Come on. Doris, are you leaping yet? And I'm believing her school bill is going to pay, be paid in full. Aha. Aha. The Son, S U N, not S O N. The Son of Righteousness with healing in his wings. There's fire. The fire of God comes down upon bright blazing glory. That's what it is. The wings he refers to are not the wings of a bird. But the flames of fire that are shaped like wings.
coming on you right now in the name of Jesus. Release it. Release it. Release it now. Release it on my brother. Release it upon my sister, Lord. Let a fresh anointing be poured out, O oh God. Somebody else has a testimony. I'm going to take your testimony tonight. God's doing some things in people's lives. Believe in God for that $5,000 printer. Lord said, don't shrink back in faith. Doesn't please me. He said, put the pressure on your faith some more. And here already, our dear sweet partners are taking care of half of it. $2,500 is going out this week. And somebody yet, somebody yet is going to sow the other $2,500. The Lord's speaking to you even now. And God's going to use you. Ephesians 6, 8, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Look at it. Look at it in the word. Ephesians 6, 8. And yet somebody's been sowing and you got a testimony. Tia, your testimony blessed me the other day. To see what God had done in your life is awesome. You know what I wish you'd do? I wish you'd right there where you are, just trample, stamp your foot and say, how does it feel to be stepped on like ashes? How does it feel, Mr. Devil, to be stepped on like ashes? Now listen, some of you are coming out of your comfort zone and I want you to ponder for a moment, Mark chapter three, the first five verses. I like to read it out of the New King James Version. The story of the man with the withered hand. You remember? I went to school with a girl with a withered hand. I've always thought of this. Every time I was around her, I couldn't help but think of that story. I'm just a young boy. She had that withered hand. Jesus met him in the synagogue and said to him, Stand forth! The thing I love about Jesus is he had the command of faith. He didn't say, Do you believe, brother? Do you think you can make it? Are you going to be all right? Well, you know, I'm just trying to teach the Lord, trying to teach you something. I don't think so. He said, stand forth. Perhaps this man had never stood up in front of a lot of people before. Or maybe he was embarrassed or ashamed to do so because of his, of his withered hand. The reports just keep flashing in front of my phone of the violence that's taking place in the earth today. God, we need a miracle in this nation. But Jesus said to the man with the withered hand, stand forth! And uh, maybe he was ashamed to do it because of the withered hand, but Jesus was telling him and in spite of how he felt, it's time to step out of your comfort zone and some of you are in a zone right now and it's comfortable Jesus made what I believe to be one of the most amazing statements in the Bible he said to the man stretch out your hand and he stretched it out he stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other and Jesus told the man to do something he couldn't do the command of faith is always asking somebody to do something they've never done before. And when you hear me pray for the sick, I will always say, do what you couldn't do. Twist, shout, move about, check it out. Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And the Bible says his hand was restored as whole. Just like the other. And Jesus told the man to do something he couldn't do. And if he did it, his hand would not be withered. Figure that out. Figure that one out. I believe Jesus wanted him to get into faith, action, and obedience. Get your faith into action. And the, restore, the story reminds me of times that I've been ministering before. A man came to me in, where was that? Prince Rupert, Canada had terrible back pain 
I said, bend over. He said, I can't. I said, you want healing? He said, yes. I said, bend over. I can't. I said, turn around. I took my hand and slapped the bottom of his back and he bent over, totally healed. I don't recommend that. Unless you're flowing in the anointing. I laid hands on him and told him to bend over. And he stood up, totally healed. Step out of your comfort zone. Mm. I remember being in Seattle one time. Now, I don't hit people unless the Lord tells me to hit them. I don't need to hit them, actually. Man stood before me with a tremendous hernia. I reared back and hit him in the gut so hard it knocked him over. But he got up totally healed of the hernia. That's stepping out of your comfort zone. I don't like that when that happens, but it happened. I wouldn't really have to hit him. All I had to do is speak the word and he could have been healed. And I guess his faith was somewhere else. But when you act on the word of the Lord, you get your miracle. When you act on the word of the Lord, you get your miracle. Are you hearing me? Some of you needing a miracle. When you act on the word of the Lord, you get your miracle. Glory. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Just got a few more minutes left in this broadcast. We're taking off a little bit early tonight with our family. Just the four younger ones. The older ones are going to go be with Grandma, but we're going to go go to the beach. It's an hour away. Somebody blessed us with the gas money. And Thank you, Jesus, for every need met in my brother's life, in my sister's life. And I thank you, Father, that before Friday, we're going to have the full $5,000 and we will pay this thing in full. Some of you are just joining me. You know, I could stay on here till midnight and people would come and come and come. There's over 5,000 people on my, what is it, 4,500 people on my Facebook People just keep coming and coming and coming and, and seeing this. Oh, Stacy, I have done it for TV stations when I was younger, when I had the strength. I have the strength in the name of Jesus. This will print thousands of booklets. And we're getting it brand new. In the name of Jesus, I started to withdraw my faith and think, well, we'll just go down to Los Angeles and get a used piece of junk, haul it up here, put it together with baling wire and duct tape, make it work for a couple of thousand dollars. But the Lord said, no, I want you to have the, the best. These little machines, I don't know which one it is. It's the best one. It go, it's the finisher. It's what folds the books, staples them. I can do a full color magazine if I want to do it. We needed $5,000, oh, about two hours ago. And now we just need 2,500. But it's coming in, because we got our faith out there. It's a Rico, Rico. That's the name of it. And when I get it, I'm gonna take video of it, and show you, give you a tour. The whole printing press and shipping department of our ministry is being set up in our garage. Despise not the day of small beginnings. But I've got about 5,000 names of people who want to hear from us every month. And they need a little booklet from my teachings every month. We're going to do it. And you're going to help me. By faith, I believe it. You can help me tonight by going to monthlypartners.com. It's very simple. It's made to be simple. Monthlypartners.com and earmark it. Say, Brother Woods, this is my offering and it's earmarked towards printing press. Praise God. Thank you, Kathy from Georgia. Thank you, Stacy from Texas. Yes, yes, yes. We're believing for double portion. Kathy, that builds my faith when you said that. I'll not forget 
the days when Kathy came to our tent meeting. Boy, were those good days, Kathy. And God's not done having good days there in Atlanta area. I really miss my friends all over the world. I don't know what I would do without being able to come to you this way. Hallelujah. What is that? Might as well start adding. Come down to twenty three ninety five. We'll have it. We'll have it. We're going to put it there, Stacy. Thank you, Father. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. No more hardships in Jesus' name. No more lack. No more discouragement. No more pain in your body. I rebuke that pain. And I command it to get out of your body right now. Thank you, Father, for that person that's wanting you to revive, to revive, Lord, their prayer life. Selena, thank you. I got that. That brings it to 1895. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Selena from Kentucky is helping me get this printing press. Oh, God, bless their business. Bless everything they set their hand to, Father. In the name of Jesus, do it, Father. Do it, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for a greater anointing that comes upon their checkbook, Lord, and upon their business and upon all their clients. Father, double their clients. <laughs> ah, yeah, I said that. I hope I didn't knock you over. Double their clients, Lord. June is the month of double portion. Don't bring them lazy clients, Lord. Bring them good clients. Clients that pay on time. We don't want no deadheads. Shoo! Like Sunday Night Live in here. Father, go right now. Send your angels right now, right now, right now, right now. Send the angels forth. Lay hold of supernatural harvest. Cause it to come to my brother right now. Cause it to come to my sister and to that business right now there. Hey, yeah. Come on. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. You're in the covenant of peace, Selena. You're under the covenant of peace. Hey! Victory all over you. Victory all over you. When you wake up in the morning and you go to your work, it's not going to be like it was last month. It's going to be all the way different. The fire, the fire, the fire. Healing in his wings. Healing in his wings coming over that business right now. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. This too shall pass. The Lord says this too shall pass. You won't have to go through this persecution. You won't have to go through this tragedy that tried to come upon relationships. This too is going to pass. You think it's going to happen tonight? Do you think it's going to happen tonight? You think it'll take two or three more days? Or you think it'll happen tonight? Be it unto you according to your faith. I'm asking for a reason. You think it'll happen tonight? Thank you, Father. Thank you. There's so much I can say, but I'm waiting. Waiting on the Lord. I don't want to overstep my, my mouth. I don't want to be too rash in my mouth. I want to wait, wait on the Lord. Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, 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 hey! 
The Lord said, I'm going to take that which the thief has stolen. I'm going to jerk it out of his hands and bring it back to you seven times greater. Seven times greater. Seven times greater. For the thief has been found. I don't know if you know it or not, but you're on the victory side. You're on the victory side of things. That means you're you're on the happy side. You're on the happy side of this thing. You're on the Jesus side. I sat in my garage. I got one little computer out there. I sat there, I was praying. The children came out, Daddy, why are you out here? I said, go on in, I'm, I'm in my shipping department, I'm in my printing room. They said, you're what? I said, never mind, I'm in faith, go back in. And I sat there and I prayed and I started seeing printing presses and, <laughs> I know it's an odd place to put it in your garage, but my garage is clean. I mean, my wife keeps the garage so clean you can eat off the, the floor. You know, I wouldn't do it, but you could, I suppose. There ain't nothing in my life that's a mess. You ought to know that. I got five children and I got white carpet. Go figure. Little as much when God is in it. When you start out, you start out, you watch God. Don't reduce your vision to a three by five card. You hear me? Keep it on the 11 by 17. <laughs> Dream bigger, think bigger, believe bigger. Don't tolerate the small mind of the devil. Don't let that snake in your garden. Don't let him come around you. Say, I believe in the bigness of God. I believe in the greatness of God. What a God we serve. Bigger than all my problems. Bigger than any mountains. Bigger, 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 he's bigger. Come on, God's a big God. He knows how to heal you. He knows how to take care of you. He knows how to refresh you, restore you, renew you. <laughs> Your miracle is on the way. Your harvest is on the way. The victory is on the way. I suppose some people are looking for a preacher that I have five points in a poem if you would open up your Bible. I want the Holy Ghost, man. I gotta have his experience daily. I gotta have his the word and the spirit mixed together. That's what I gotta have. We're blessed and highly favored. Yes, 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 yes. Hey! 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 Release the devil! portion, a double portion of a spirit, a double portion upon those dry bones, a double portion. There may not be anything in that garage right now, but I see it in the spirit. I can smell the ink. I can feel the paper. I can, I can see it for the glory of God. This is not a dream for myself. This is not something I want for myself. This is not some toy. This is a tool for the kingdom of God. And it's way overdue. Jesus. Come on, by faith, by faith, do what the Lord tells you. I can tell you what I hear the Lord saying, but I'd rather you do what the Lord tells you. Come on. Designated for the printer. Put on their double portion like Kathy did. Double portion. Hey! Thank you! You see, there's some people who are assigned to take care of the prophet of God and feed them. You know who I'm talking about. And there are some people who are assigned to special projects like this. And you'll know who you're talking about. But you've got to move in obedience and watch the Son of Righteousness. 
with healing in his wings. Jesus, 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 come down on my brother's money. Come down on my sister's finances. We don't tolerate lack anymore. We don't tolerate lack in Jesus' name. We bind it up. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus. I don't know if you feel what I'm feeling tonight, but I feel the glory of God manifesting right here on this program. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the goodness of the Lord. There it comes. There it comes. A new wave of His Spirit coming over you right now to provide every need that you have. I come against lack in your life. I bind it right now. I speak to lack. I take authority over it right now. Jesus, I thank you for a double portion starts pouring out upon my brother. A double portion starts pouring out upon my sister, Lord. If somebody took care of the $5, it'd be 1890. If somebody took care of that 895, we'd be down to a thousand to go. Wouldn't that be something? Yes, it is. It's happening. It's happening. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Without a vision, the people perish. I've told you my vision tonight. This printing press, which camera am I on? This printing press. This is a small one. It's only $5,000 for that finisher. It'll print thousands of booklets. Print my partner's letters. They have a bigger one, much bigger. The price tag on that is $245,000. This one here is only $5,000. Putting it in perspective. I wish I had a better picture, but this kind of nails it down for you. I started tonight believing for $5,000 to get this. The leasing company said no. And I started to withdraw in my spirit. And I said, well, we'll just load up the trailer and go down to Los Angeles. There's a bunch of them, a bunch of junk used. We'll just thousand, two thousand dollars. We'll just get it used and bring it up here and fix it up with duct tape and bailing wire, I guess. <laughs> And the Lord said, no, that's not what I've called you to do. He said, I want you to believe the best. So I said, all right. I went on tonight, not, you know, looking at $5,000 like, like it's a big, huge mountain in front of me. And our dear, precious partners in Kentucky there said they're putting a check in the mail for $2,500. Somebody else has already given $100. Somebody else has given $5. Somebody else is sending a check for 500. Within two hours, this has happened. We're down to $1,895 and it's going to come in tonight. And we're going to have, God's going to have the best. I said, God's going to have the best. It's got a beautiful finisher. I'm going to crack these little booklets out. My dream is to do it weekly, but if it just happens monthly to start with, we'll see where it goes. Wouldn't you like to get a little booklet from me every month? Would that be exciting to you? Mm-hmm. I got some things to say to the people that give in my first little booklet. I don't know yet what, but I'm going to pray it out in the Holy Ghost. He'll show me what to say. How to dedicate our first one. Thank you, Kathy. Designating for printer, double portion seed. By going to monthlypartners.com. Say it out loud. Say, Brother Woods is going to have this printer to the glory of God paid in full. Ha ha to the leasing company. You know what they tried to tell me? They tried to tell me, and even the salesman wasn't too excited about it. He said, Reverend, he said, they want 25%. I said, I don't think so. He said, no, I don't think so either. He said, why don't you just write a check? 
Well, we're going to do that. We're going to write the check. As soon as it all comes in, we're going to write the check. We're going to say, look what God has done. We're going to look what God has done. And we're shouting already in advance, in advance, already saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say thank you, Lord? <laughs> it's like the devil's like dust underneath our feet. He's just a nothing. Now, what is the dream on your heart? I want you to put the pressure of that on the Lord tonight. Put the pressure of your dream on the word. Come on, word it. Word it. Put your faith on it. Yes. Yes, Doris, thank you for saying that. She said, Brother Woods is going to have this printer paid in full. Hey, yes, 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 Lord. I've got the Holy Ghost down in my heart, just like the Bible says. I had, I had stomach issues earlier today. You know what I did? I stuck my hand on my stomach. I said, no, you don't. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And just like that, it went. And I laughed. I said, I know I'm in a battle. How do you fight the warfare like Jesus fought? You speak the word. You don't have to get all in an emotional froth or a sweat and scream at the devil. Mm -mm. You fight the good fight of faith. If we'd fight in our faith, We'd whoop the devil. The devil's already been whooped, but we'd whoop him even more. Yes, yes, yes. We believe we receive it. I told the Lord tonight, I said, Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to come on with this tonight. And as the program progressed, the Spirit of the Lord said, if I can't get my people to use their faith, I'm displeased. The Lord wants more than anything for you to use your faith in him, in the name of Jesus, in your seed, in the ground. And it's a constant battle, a constant fight in your mind to keep you from using faith. There's somebody, I heard the Lord say, there's a, there's a person that said, I don't know, to themselves or to somebody else, well, we already, we already helped in that area. And the Lord said, don't wait for another time. A delayed seed in the ground is a delayed harvest. Strike while it's hot. Strike while the anointing is hot for it. I don't fully understand all that, but that's what I hear the Lord say. And that brings a confirmation to you. Strike while you're hot. Got the Holy Ghost down in my heart. Let my shut my mic while I praise him. Loose, oh God, in the name that is above every other name. Thank you, Jesus. It's all coming back to you. A double portion is coming back to you. 
Thank you, Lord. Tony and Pam, I saw your name come across my desk again. And I began to pray in the spirit. It must have been about five minutes at least, praying in the Holy Ghost over you. Something supernatural is about to take place with you both. Something powerful is about to break in the spirit for you. tonight. Hey, thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Down in my heart, just like the Bible says. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody satisfy me like him. Jesus, put your warm heavenly blanket over my brother and my sister. Embrace them. Let them feel the satisfaction of your joy. Let them feel the warmth of your love. Hold, their, hold them tight in your embrace, oh God. There comes showers of blessing. The victory march coming to your feet, that's what it is. Worship, worship in him. Worship in him in spirit and in truth. The fragrance of the Spirit comes over you. The fragrance of His glory comes over you. You shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Death cannot have power over you. Demon of death can't have a power over your mind. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus coming over you right now. In the name that's above every other name. The victory of the Lord is coming. The fragrance of the Lord Jesus. He's the lily of the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the great I am. And the great I am is the living one inside of you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus, Jesus. He's the way maker. He's your shield and buckler. He's your advocate. He's your friend. He's your helper. He's your great physician. He's your high priest of your confession. He's been authorized over your mouth. God has authorized Jesus, the word of God, over your mouth. Come in agreement with the one who's been authorized over your mouth, the high priest of your confession. Hey, my God, my Lord. Somebody tonight hasn't felt the fire of God like this in a long time. It's been a while. It's been a while, but you need it. It's like fresh living water over your soul. Like a, a parched desert land. And you've been so barren and you've been so dry. You've been so thirsty. And the water of God flowing over you. And you can't get enough. You can't get enough. Come on, drink in deeply. Drink in deeply right now. That's it. Drink in deeply. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, pour your glory out over this nation. Devil, you take your hands off of God's property. Take your hands off the people of this nation. Devil, you can't have them. You can't touch our police officers. All the demons of hell can't touch the authorities that God has placed in order. 
We pray for those who are in authority. We don't beat those who are in authority. We pray for them. There is a consequence, a spiritual consequence that's coming upon America. You hear the prophetic voice of the Lord right now. There is a spiritual consequence coming upon America for the closing of churches, for the looting of businesses and the ransacking of businesses. There is a spiritual consequence coming. My God, my Lord, have mercy on this nation. We cry for your mercy. Jesus. Let the fresh fire, the hot breath of the Lord come over you right now. Let the wind of heaven blow over your spirit. Let the dew of heaven pour out upon your parched soul right now. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost come right there in your room, right there where you are. I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. What a night. What a night. Thank you for the Spirit of the Lord God that's moving in our midst. Ah, oh, yeah, Lord. I'm so happy. So thankful for what you've done and what you're fixing to do, Lord. If you're just joining us early tonight, we started early. I believe in God for our, our new printer. Cost us $5,000. Buy it brand new or we could lease it and be charged 25%. That's not God's will. I don't even need to ask pastor if that's God's will. I know that's not God's will. I promise you I don't try to make it a money but I, I, I the spirit of the Lord just moves in those directions thank you Selena thank you Mike and Dee thank you Kathy thank you Stacy what would I do without People from Kentucky and Georgia and Texas and, and Washington and Oregon. And what would I do without you? God would raise somebody up, I'm sure, but it just moves me. Anybody who would see the vision of God and believe in it and get in on it, there's got to be a blessing coming to you. I know there is. We started out with a $5,000 need tonight for this copier, and now it's down to $1,895.
Can you imagine 1895? Come on, let's speak over it. Can we speak over it? Father, and then Antoinette, Pastor, Pastor Roden. Good to see you, my sister from Miami. I sure do love you, sis. You're a special woman of God to me and Angela. Special woman of God. Yes, Kim, I saw that and I can't wait to get that check in my hand. I'm going to pray over it. Father, I put this amount in my hand. $1,895. It's all coming down. Somebody's going to sow a significant seed into good ground tonight. And we're going to order that machine. And it's going to come and be used for the glory of God. And we're going to say, look what God did. Look what God's partners did. Look at this. Would you look at what God did? We speak to the mountain of $1,895. We command it to go. You disappear in front of our eyes tonight. Thank you, Father, for partners who know how to t- who know how to sow. Who know how to sow into the kingdom business for the propagation of the gospel, for, for the printing of the gospel. Thank you for doing it, Father. Bless those who stood with me in faith tonight, Lord. And Father, even on this rebroadcast, Lord, somebody's going to jump in. Somebody's going to jump in and they're going to say, yes, Lord, use me. Use my giving. A delayed seed in the ground is a delayed harvest. Do what the Lord tells you because the Lord's speaking to somebody. With a $500 seed, somebody's got speaking to your heart about $895. And yet somebody, the Lord's speaking to you about a $1,000 seed. Maybe you might have to reach back over there in the savings and pull it out. You might have to untie some things to make it happen. But the Lord is going to use you mightily. Thank you, Jesus. For the fresh flowing fragrance and the favors of the Lord. That flows to my brother and to my sister right now. In Jesus' holy name, thank you, Father. We believe we receive in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, touch my brother, touch my sister. You don't have a thing that God can't get you. I said, you don't have a thing that God didn't bring towards you. And God's about to do something brand new with you. Something brand new is about to happen for you. I have not retreated. I have not compromised. I have pressed forth tonight. And I'm glad I did. And I'm I'm gonna put that same enthusiasm upon you tonight. Whatever dream you have, press in. Don't reduce your dream from a 11 by 17 down to a three by five. Keep it big. God never, never created you to be a grasshopper mentality. God never created for the grasshopper mentality to come over you. We look like grasshoppers in their sights. Oh, but you're a trailblazer. You're not a pathfinder. You're a trailblazer in the name of Jesus. I see you with that machete and you're hacking through the weeds and you're hacking through the brush and you're blazing a trail and your your feet are sore and your hands are tired and the blisters have developed and it is so easy you want to give up you want to sit out and rest a while but the lord says keep going my daughter keep going my son press in a little bit longer press in a little bit more the worst is over and the best is yet to come you're a trailblazer not a pathfinder you got the devil on the run you got the devil on run somebody's going to sow a 500 dollar seed it's been a long time since you've done something like that But I see the Lord saying it. And when you sow a $500 seed tonight, you're going to see your sons and daughters are going to, there's going to be a turnaround in your family. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. You cannot buy a miracle. You cannot buy God. But when you release the seed out of your hand, it releases the miracle out of heaven. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God and my Lord. Come on, right now. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Go right now. Go right now. Monthlypartners.com. 
put that seed in the ground towards this printer. I showed it, but some of you are still coming in the room tonight. This is the printer. This is the miracle printer that I'm believing God for. The largest one is bigger than my garage, $245,000. It'll do everything but pop popcorn, I suppose. But this is their smaller one. It's only $5,000. The leasing company wanted to lease it to us at 25% interest. We said, no way, we're gonna believe God. We're gonna take it to the Lord. And already, already this challenge has been nearly met with $1,895 to go and God's gonna meet it. We're gonna pay for it in full. We're gonna write the check and I'm gonna smash it in the devil's face and I'm gonna publish the good news works of the gospel. There's a lot of scriptures that talks about how blessed the man is who publishes the gospel, who prints the truth. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. There's a woman watching, and the Lord is healing your abdomen region. We've had a lot of activity going on in your abdomen region. You need a healing right now. And the healing power of God is coming over your abdomen region right now in the name of Jesus. There's another woman watching. You need a miracle in your family. You need a miracle in your children. You need a turnaround. You need a breakthrough and you're not sure how to get it. You don't even know where to go. And sometimes you weep tears on your pillow. And you wake up, your pillow is wet with tears. And God said the seed that leaves your hand, it might leave your hand, but it never leaves your life. It's going to create a harvest, a miracle harvest. And a double portion is coming to you. I said a double portion is coming to you. A double portion is coming in the name of Jesus. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Come on, come on. A delayed seed in the ground is a delayed harvest. Hallelujah. 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 I see a church. I see a church. It seems... Oh, yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, wait a minute. Don't say that. Don't say that. I just see a church. That's all I'm allowed to say. And out of that church budget, they're supposed to sow. And the Lord said, as they sow out of the church budget, some rumors, some words that were spoken ill against the church is going to cease and desist. As a result of your seed sowing, your name and your seed. And the, the power from God is coming down upon your church and Everything's going to change within a matter of 14 days. You're going to see a miracle breakthrough for your church. As you sow out of your church, something to do from out of your church, I don't know. You may have to go to the pastor and ask him to write the check. I'm not sure what it is. Jesus. Let that breaker anointing come down on that $1,895 tonight. Let that breaker anointing come down upon it. Smite it now in Jesus' name. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. I see the mountain being smitten by the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for their obedience, Lord. Thank you for their obedience, Father. Every night, every night I come here, I can feel the presence of the Lord in my secret place. I lift up your needs, I lift up your family, I lift up your finances. I speak faith and healing over you right now. I speak against that disastrous thing that's taking place in your ministry. I come against that disastrous thing that's come against you spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially in your family. I come against the disaster I come against it by the word of the Lord. The devil has no strength in your situation, in the affairs of relationships in your life. Behold not the threatenings, the Lord said. Teresa, the Lord said, behold not the threatenings towards your ministry. God's got this planned out. God's got it. God's got this thing in your ministry. Everything's going to be all right. I don't know what that means, but I hear the Lord say that. God's got it, and everything's going to be all right in your ministry. The 
the enemy hurled his best, but God's got this one. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I hear that about your husband. I hear that about you. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He's ordered your steps. You're going to be at the right place at the right time. You're going to say, whoop, look at God. Hey! <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Selena, I just want to brag on the Lord in you. Somebody was commenting about little Andrew's shoes. And uh, we said, well, those are the shoes from the Lord. <laughs> what? I said, those are the shoes from the Lord. The Lord blessed my little Andrew with those shoes. I mean top-notch, first-class, good shoes. Wow, somebody said, you pay that kind of money for... I said, no, the, the Lord does. I was bragging on the Lord. I Man, it was wide open. I took advantage. I said, the Lord is good to his children. You have no idea what it does to Angela and I when you bless the man of God with the clothing and the shoes that you did for my little boy. And you didn't give us no junk. I don't know, maybe you thought it was junk, but we thought it was great. It was such a blessing. You'll never know. Time and time again, how grateful we were for that. That's a seed. It's a seed in good ground, Selena. We we're so blessed. Yes, not just help, you you sewed, girl. You you and your husband, you sewing machine. I'm fully looking for a praise report. I'm fully looking for a praise report. Something good is getting ready to happen to both of you. Oh yes, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, Father. Well, maybe this will come in the rest of it on our rebroadcast of this program. I just felt led to come early tonight. Father, we lift up this amount of $1,895. It's not a big amount. It started out to be 5000 Look at God. Look at God. It's going to be fully met. Fully met. It is fully met. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So we said, why does he break so long? I'm asking the Lord if I, you know, I start to go off and then the, I ask the Lord, is it all right? Is there something else you want to say? <laughs> is somebody else coming in the room? Is somebody else listening? I hear from the Lord, you hear? It's more important than my time schedule. It's more important than the clock. It's more important than anything else. Did you hear from God? Did you hear from God? That's what, that's what I, I know he's going to say that. Did you hear me? Were you too busy with your own agenda and fixed on your own Mm -mm, I don't want to be too busy where I didn't hear God. What else, Lord? What else? What else? Who are you want to talk to, Lord? Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, it's done. That's right, Doris. It's done. We declare it so. We call it done in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. I suppose I should just write the check. Just hold on to it till it's all there. That'd be an act of faith. I mean, we don't want to give hot checks out. We're not going to do that. I'll wait till it's all there, but I'm going to write the check by faith totally. The ball is in motion. I'm so glad I didn't run to Los Angeles and settle for junk. Don't do that. Don't do that in your own personal life. Believe. Stretch your faith out there and believe. I want you to think about it. The church is closed. The pandemic came. The church is closed out of fear. 
because most most church people are operating in fear. That's number one. Then riot just living in place. Now they're reporting the murder hornet. That's a pestilence. That's a pestilence. I sense there's going to be some other things happening, but you're going to be safe. You're covered in the blood. You're, you got a covenant of peace. You got your seed in the ground. And I declare you're going to be okay. Ain't no murder hornet coming to your house. You hear me? Uh-uh, they're far from you. I'm in Washington State, but they're far from me. Mm-hmm. They're far from you. Uh, COVID-19 doesn't even know my address. Doesn't even want to come around me. No way. Not in a moment. Stay in faith, y'all. This is the last days. Things are about to wrap up. And the trump of God is about to sound and you need to stay in faith. Don't let your heart grow troubled. When you see it on the news and you see this report and you see these police officers killed and you see... Don't let your heart be troubled. There is a... There are millions of young people today that have never grown up in church. They're heathen. They're not even backslidden. They don't even know God. And uh, these people need the Lord more than anything. But the only, know, the only thing they know how to do is riot and protest. They, they've never taken a moment. That's why I said last night, if you're one of my boys or girls, young men or women, and you go to my church, and you should, I should never see you out there protesting. Because you should do it on your knees. You should do the warfare on your face. Pray on your faith. Turn, I can turn things in prayer faster than a sign or a, a bottle rocket or some crazy. That's the work of the flesh. That's a demonic work. I can't help but think that there's spiritual consequences coming to America for that. I know there is. And what's worse yet is it doesn't seem like there's any spiritual voices speaking out. Where are they? Where are they? All these famous people sold books. Where are they? <laughs> I guess that means it's time for me to go. I'm still standing even after we go off the air waiting. Waiting for your love. Gift, your seed of faith. Waiting for this $1,895 to be met. And I believe that it's done in Jesus' name. We started out believing for 5000 Now we're down to 1895 Even while I go to the coast and come back overnight, I'm going to be checking. And I know God will put it upon people's hearts, even on our rebroadcasting of this program. So, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you that it's done. God, you j- I heard the Lord say for those who gave tonight, God, and those who gave yesterday, God just started a miracle through your seed. God just started a miracle through your seed. And the process has just begun. And the harvest is coming in the name of Jesus. It's done. It's done, it's done, it's done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, beloved. Rejoice with me while I take the little ones and my wife an hour away to the coast. We're going to go down and just enjoy our time. I'm using points for our free stay and your precious couple gave us gas money so we're gonna go and we won't be gone we'll be back tomorrow we're just gonna go and rest and get away and look at the beach and then hear from the lord and play with the kitties right all right i'm out of town and i'm out of town i'm out of time and then i'm out of town god bless you we'll see you tomorrow night you've been listening to pray america live with evangelist and radio pastor david woods Join us online with David Woods' Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope channels for a refreshing time of one-on-one prayer, testimonies, and singing. David Woods Ministries is supported by the love gifts and free will love offerings of partners just like you. You can become a radio ministry partner by going to www.monthlypartners.com.